All right, everyone, welcome along. So X functions. Now, X functions are one that is kind of like, they're really difficult to get your head around initially, but once you do, it just makes perfect sense. Okay. We have to start by thinking about the basics of it. So let's cut on over to Power BI Desktop and see if we can have a look at a basic function as to what's going on and then what the X function side of it is doing instead. Okay, let's try and see if we can work that through. So here we are in Power BI Desktop. Okay, this is our bike data that we've got. And what I've done is I've taken two charts here and we can see they look pretty much identical and I assure you they are. What they're doing though is very different. So one is running a sum X and the other one is running like a normal measure. So if we have a look, we can see. Oh, so the first one here is running a simple count rows. So let's go and get the number of rows that we've got that match the criteria that we've put forward and count the rows on it, okay? The other one is doing the same fundamentally, but it's, we're providing it with something. So we're saying, go through and for each year that you've got in your criteria, evaluate that and then once you've built that table, sum it together, right? So you think, well, that's, well, for each of these, it's, it's just gonna be a year, isn't it? Why, why would that make any sense? I don't understand, okay? So what happens if we do the next step? So the moment we're looking at years, but what happens if we say, well, let's look at months, okay? So we've brought in month name, and you say, well, they're still the same, okay? Yes, they are, but they're doing something different. So the first one is taking the table, the calendar table, because that's what we're then filtering and it's filtering it down. And then based on that filter, the join is being applied across here, okay? That's the key thing, the join is being applied across here. So there's one line kind of going through and that then filters the table, say, well, this is what we need to do. What's happening with the X function is subtly different. Okay, so the X function is saying, well, for each year that we've got. So for each January, we've got, for each year, I think there's five years here from memory, 2019 to 2024. So for each January, go through and evaluate. Well, so it'll go through and it'll follow the line here. And it'll say, well, I've got 2019. How many have I got that met, meet that criteria? in 2019, and it's gonna build a table, 2019, 2020, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then it's gonna add that column of values up. So already we're seeing, hang on, we're doing more, aren't we? And now we are, is the simple truth. And in terms of doing it this way, it doesn't make much sense, right? Because what we'd actually be doing is we're slowing everything down. Now, there are reasons why we would want to do this Okay, or why this is a benefit. Typically, what we're doing now is just wouldn't make sense. Okay, this would be if we were saying, well, we want to multiply it by 20%, say, to say, well, what's happened, or if we were looking to project something, or if we wanted to do some sort of a currency conversion. Now, unfortunately, what we don't have with these is, is a, there's no higher in terms of cost information in this, which is quite annoying, actually, if there's no revenue calculations, that would be definitely nice to have. So we've got something that works as a basic and the same, doesn't it? Okay, what happens if we change some things with this? So let's try and see what happens if we do this and we just say, well, actually, let's just evaluate it against calendar. This is gonna run against each and every row in the calendar table, which evaluates to January, and then which evaluates to February, so on and so forth. So, if we come away from the page and come back to it. It's crashed, of course, hasn't it? So let's go to view the performance analyzer. So it's there. And we can see if we refresh the data, we're still getting near enough the same. Okay, clear, refresh the data, refresh the data. 
So we aren't really seeing a big difference in the way this process, is, but it is doing things differently. If we were to try and take it the other way though, okay, which is where potentially we'd get to, where we could say, well, let's look at stations bike hire for it. This should still work, but it will fail, okay? Now it's gonna fail because our evaluation context is gonna be so huge that it can't work through it. So we'll get a row limit error eventually when this comes back. We can see it's thinking about it. Believe it or not, there is, you can see the spinny thing going on here. So it's still thinking about this. So what we've got here is we get to this point where we're understanding there's a difference going on. There's a different way of processing this. Now this difference is part of the challenge that we've got. Now, one of the issues we've got with the bike hire is there's no station IDs. And we this is something we've been kicking down the cat down the road, trying to work out what the right thing to do is with. It's not uncommon to have these kind of situations where you've got something like this in the real world. Um, you know, you might have shop names, but there's no shop ID for your organization because you just haven't, you've grown in a way that you haven't thought that. You know, it's, oh, it's the Newcastle branch, oh, it's this branch. They don't necessarily have an ID as such in the reporting context that, or in any of the data that comes through in the reporting side. They will have an ID somewhere in the system, but potentially it's not one that you see. So here we go, you see it's errored out. Okay. And we can see the error here is this 100,000 rows or million rows of data that you can bring through. So you go, wow, a million rows. We had 12 months across uh, and then our 2,000 or so stations. That shouldn't we shouldn't be hitting that, that level of rows. In terms of stations, how many have we got? Yeah, 2,400. So something's going on that just blows everything out of all proportion. And as I say, it's to do with the way this query is built, that this join in particular, this relationship is so poor. And it's poor because we haven't got an ID that's consistently there. You can see I've been looking, trying to work out what the right thing is for it, but we don't have it. What this has done, though, is it's really shown us that behind the scenes, what's going on within our, with our, our X functions is something very different to what we would like to happen. Let's bring that back to calendar. You can see it'll magically start to work again. Okay, so something is going on with it. In fact, this is taking way longer than the other one did. So we definitely know that the performance online isn't working properly with these. And I think this is, I've kind of known this as a caching query with it. So what we can see is that we need to think about when we use X functions. Okay, now, because an X function builds that row of data and then evaluates it, though, you can do more with it. So we could look and see, well, what happens if we, you know, if we said here that multiplied by 0.5, Okay, so that's going to kind of half it, isn't it? And we can see then if we were to put them all on the same table, it's half. Okay, you can do exchange rate calculations that way. That's kind of one of the reasons why I'm saying this. You know, these things you can do. You can do something else where you could multiply something out. You could do anything with it. We could be evaluating this to see, well, are we getting our 10% growth? So we could put that in on a prior year one and then do to see, well, is it, equally 10% based on what prior year was to then evaluate current year. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff you can do with X functions. It's just a case of understanding what the goal or the objective is beforehand. In terms of this, so where we're starting to see this issue, we've got two clear things that we need to fix. So two of them, we need to get these IDs in. So we need to have to put in station IDs and work out a way of doing that. Bear in mind, the two are coming from different things. One's coming from, in terms of our station IDs, it's gonna come from our new lookup that we've built, everything like that, and we don't really wanna to have to try and merge the two together, but I think we are gonna to have to do that now in the events table. We then also have the, the issue that we're gonna to have to piece together and understand what is it that we can do to avoid the need for this and to make sure these keep working quickly. Because if we go in, look back here and just look at our raw data here. It's quite slow to load the page, okay? But if I was to turn around and say, well, show me 2022, it has to think about it. It's slow. The page still hasn't loaded, okay? 
So this is where we get to aggregations. And aggregations is all about thinking in terms of the rows as well. Okay, so that'll be what we're going to do next. So what do you reckon then? Okay, X functions have a place, right? and there's definitely value in them. Okay, we're going to keep, we're going to come back to X functions in this. The important thing I want to do is to lead you in the mindset that X functions and aggregations have a similar pedigree but there's a difference in terms of where you're doing them. So X functions are done at the point of execution. Aggregations are done at the point of ETL. So as, you're eat, as part of your ETL processing, you will build your aggregation table. An aggregation table will give us a nice thick go because it, it will give us our daily for it. So in terms of what we're doing, there'll be compromise we'll have to do with it. But there's a point where you can understand well, the compromise makes sense to the ETL side because you've then got the raw data that we can run against. We can use X functions if we need to, we can use this, we can use that, and it all combines into a, into a new way of processing it, a different mindset for it. So it's important for you to kind of see the X functions, but there's not much we can do until we start to bring in the next step. So stick with us for next week, okay? That's gonna be the important thing. There's too many concepts with this to kind of push this all through together. Check out the articles that we've got on LinkedIn. As I say, links down below. Right? And really think about where are we going with this and how is this going to benefit my business? As always, if you've enjoyed what you're seeing and you want to hear more, you think, well, what, what is going on? Send us an email, office at geordieconsulting.co.uk and we'll get in touch and we'll take your business to the next level. For now, though, stay safe, take care. Ta-da. Ta-da.